Well, hey everybody. Um, today's project is kind of an interesting one. Um, the project itself is going to be a, a box for a game board, uh, Scrabble specifically, for an old friend of mine. And uh, this is actually version two. Um, I had version one was going to be some um, bird's eye maple, new, new stock bird's eye maple. And, Long story short, my skill level in woodworking <laughs> changed those plans. Anyway, so then plan plan B is going to take this. This is um, casing stock. So this is actually takeoff. Um, old, old stock oak. And it's reclaimed. You might see some nail holes here and there. Um, and I, I know it's casing stock. Let's see if I can show you the profile here. Ooh, extreme close up. You see how it's hollowed out here? So it's edge and edge here so that um, <clears throat> it contacts the wall. It goes from the door jam to the wall. And then it's hollowed out part, unless any imperfections in the jam or the wall be hidden. Step one, we got to um, run it to get uh, an even thickness. There's actually four different thicknesses here. There's this, here, right here, it dives down again, and then goes up to this one. So what we'll do is we'll take it down to the lowest one, and uh, that should give us an, roughly a 5 8 inch piece. And then once we have that flattened out, we will turn it around and we'll run it in, um, take the stain edge off, and that will give us a piece. Um, we're targeting a half inch thickness on this, so um, a lot of work with a hand plane to start, um, just to save time in the power plane as we're knocking down the two high edges. So we'll run it down, stain side down through the power planer after we get the two edges going. So enough talking, let's get started. Just a little perspective on step one. This is the piece I've been working over with the hand plane. And you can see it's still got a divot in the middle. Got a ways to go. But if you look at this one here, you'll see where we started. There's quite a quite a bit of a divot. So the whole idea with that was just to knock the edges down with the hand plane because it's a little bit more work, but it's so much quieter and uh, also a lot less messy. It still makes a ton of chips, but not all that dust that the uh, power planer makes. So we're going to uh, run this one, finish it up with a hand planer, and then run it through the power planer, get it down to finished thickness. So this wood. You see here we've got it milled up now. It's about 9 sixteenths of an inch thick. Some rays that show through. Don't worry about that. That won't make it. <clears throat> but just beautiful, rich wood. The house was built in 1906. I think this is original. Um, can't say for certain. But uh, you see some nail holes and don't worry about those. Um, just really, really beautiful wood. Great character. What we'll do now is if you see the, uh, the edges, so we'll run this through the table saw, get one square edge, nipping off just enough to take the stained portion off. It's got a little bit of a feature, a little uh, rounding. We'll make that square, and we'll run the other side through, and we'll do that while they're full length. These are about six, somewhere about six and a half foot tall along, and uh, <laughs> we'll get those nipped down on the table saw. This is the piece that will turn into the bottom, and it's um, half inch uh, birch plywood. So it's, it, I measured it, and it, it's just a littlest bit less than half inch, but half inch for all intents and purposes. So what we'll do is we'll cut a groove. We'll we'll pick the the bad side if there is one, and we'll cut a groove just a little bit up from the bottom. We'll cut a half inch wide groove 
uh, depth to be determined, probably a little bit less than half of the thickness of the board. And we use a dado blade for that. Um, according to my chart, that you may not be able to read, a half inch um, wants you to use both outside blades and then two of the eight inch, eight inch shims. So this is a handy, handy little card that comes with the blade set to tell you, you know, if you want a different thickness dado, what combination of blades and chippers, which are the internal blades to use. So we'll use uh, outside and two, two full width inside chippers. We'll do a test and then we'll run um, all four sides through. So since we were together last, um, I did cut, I just cut one end nice <clears throat> on the table saw, I left the other end as is for now. There was no point in, in doing anything with it yet. And then I did cut them to rough length. So uh, these are about 24 inches and finished is going to be somewhere in the neighborhood of 20. But we'll, uh, we'll get this groove figured out, run some test cuts, and then cut all four pieces before we cut the miter on the, uh, on the box itself. This next step is pretty simple. We'll cut the first miter, and so we'll cut it with the groove on the inside. I've already verified that the, the saw is 45 degrees, so we'll just um, pick a spot. It doesn't matter where, we'll make that first cut, and we'll do that for all four. So what we have now, we have the miter cut on this end, it's um, facing away, and we want to cut the miter on this end here, and, and as importantly as cutting it correctly, we want to cut every piece the exact same. So the inside of the box wants to be a, <clears throat> about 20 inches. So from the inside of the miter, which is about right here, to here is 20 inches. This mark represents approximately the outside of the miter. So this line here is the equivalent to, to this one here. It would be the exterior of the corner. We have our stop block installed and we did that pre-cut again because we want all four pieces to be the same. So it should just be a matter of, <clears throat> I wish I could test this, but I really, I can't. Um, in my mind, I, I can't think of a way to test it really well. So I had to go off of measuring, which you all know I don't care to do very much, but I, I am aware of how to do it. So we'll see how this turns out. We'll make these cuts and then move to the next part. What we'll do now is we have this sheet of half inch plywood. It's somewhere around two by four, two foot by four foot. We want to make a, a square piece that's 20 and one half inches. That's my mark. That's my uh, cross cut sled. So we'll cut this off. 20 and one half inches and then we'll have to take it from 24 wide to 20 and a half wide as well. So we'll keep on with this reclaimed theme with this piece of, <clears throat> of project work and uh, this is a top from uh, a project I built years ago if you watched the video about how to make a uh, custom entry table. This is the tabletop that was taken off. And as I started to work it, I started to uh, scrape the glue off of the underside. And I noticed it was a little bit flexing, a little bit. And then, so I said, oh dear. So long story short, the, the glue joint failed, <clears throat> which is uh, interesting. It happens. But the good news is that now makes this material thin enough to go through the... Uh, super loud planer of doom. So instead of having to take it down, flatten it by hand, because it's it's probably, it's a heavy three quarter, if, if not seven eighths, close to an inch thick. I don't want it to be that thick. Um, so like I said, I was gonna have to do it by hand, but now since it's like uh, 10 plus and 11 plus, something like that, um, 
I can run it through the, uh, the machine and have a much easier time. It will be a lot louder, but a lot easier. So that's what we'll do. What I need to do next before I glue it up, this is just dry fit, test fitted, <clears throat> is I need to actually take the sides Because the, the bottom is, or yeah, the bottom of the box is going to be uh, dry fit permanently. And I want to leave it um, as it is birch, birch plywood look. I'm going to lacquer it, but what I'm saying here is I need to stain the inside of this. But if I have, if I do it once the board's in there, I'm going to have to either not get on the board and get on the thin pieces or it's going to be a challenge. So what I'll do is I'll get the inside here sanded to 220. It's, it's pretty close right now. Stain it, and then once the stain sets, I will assemble, I'll glue, and I've got a, a detail I'm gonna do on the outside corner. And I don't wanna stain this. The detail is gonna involve some removal of material off the corner and have to restain the corner. So we'll sand, stain, once the stain dries, we'll assemble it. Then we'll do our detail on the corner here. And then we can um, finish sand the outside of the case, stain that, and it will be ready for the next step. So I think this is gonna be the end of part one. Um, this is getting on to be on the longer end of the spectrum for one of my videos. And uh, I know my attention span is, is pretty short and I imagine yours might be too. So uh, this will be the end of Scrabblebox video part one and I will get Scrabble Box video part two out as soon as I can. Um, if you have any questions or comments please uh, go ahead and leave those in the comment section otherwise stay tuned for uh, the next step of this project.